welcome to the major security incident management demonstration. And great news, this is live now in the ServiceNow store. Now, for today's offering, we'd like to welcome you to our virtual war room for driving collaborative and cohesive responses to critical security incidents. The main purpose of this demonstration is designed to help you track and resolve major security incidents. Now, this works in tandem with your security incident response and vulnerability response product capabilities out of the box. So, in order for us to go through this collaborative effort, let's go ahead and call out some of the key initiatives and the capabilities that are offered within the NSIM workspace. First and foremost, we can see all of the different major security incidents across these different records. We have our titles, categories, priorities, our incident managers, the status, as well as who promoted this from a security incident to a major security incident record. Let's go ahead and dive into the major security incident record for Log4j, one of the most popular talks in town. Now, as we go through our dedicated workspace, we'll notice a couple of different visual task boards. These visual task boards will have relevant information that pertain to a manager's persona. Over here on the left-hand side are incident impact, our number of affected assets, users, which we can also refresh in real time, and affected locations. On the right, we have our duration counters. So this ties back to your SLAs. Time since the incident started, and our time to resolution date. So one day from now, we should have all of these affected assets and users patched and ready to go. Most importantly, we want to eliminate the guesswork, right? Well, who's doing what? How is this being done? Who's involved? Where are the logs? Where's the evidence? Where's the proof? We put this into a prescriptive method by leveraging our active team task board. Here I can see that five of my members are an active team in this particular group working for this major security incident. My application security team, developer, network security, and vulnerability analyst are all working around the clock to make sure that this major security incident and low security incidents, as well as vulnerability items, have been handled in a timely manner. We can also see our trends by group which further breaks down a day-to-day -day visualization of who is working on what during these specific timeframes. On the right-hand side, we have our linked security incidents. So we can see that one security incident was promoted to a major security incident, which is currently in the analysis state. This further breaks down the trends by incident state. So if there are any changes moved over to the continue to eradicate, recover, or review, we would then see those changes based on that time period. Moving down to the bottom, we do have a security incident response team working on a task. So there are response tasks that can be tied back to the parent security incident. Everything again is in one view and everything here is giving you the perspective of that manager, security manager persona to understand where all the data is coming from. We can see that we have one overview item and we can also see these trends by task state. Again, the visual representation of the data that we've been ingested from those tables. We can also see our major security incident tasks. We have different states here, and then we've broken this down into those different assigned groups. Scrolling back to the top, we want to get further details on this particular security incident. In this case, we might need to know what the actual status of this incident is, what type of category this is on, as well as where this was sourced from. Here we can see the number, our primary state, the category, our title, and then of course, how this was sourced. In addition, our vulnerability analysts could also have populated the alert sensor or pre-populated this through an automated workflow. In this case, this could have been coming from CrowdStrike. We have our incident manager working on this as our active team member, our assignment groups, our developers, so we can see all the details behind this major security incident. And in addition to that, we have our activity stream on the right hand side, our work notes and comments. So we can see every step of the way this is going to be our cookie come trail of everything happening within this particular managed communication space. 
And speaking about communication, collaboration is extremely relevant. I think I like more information around the nature of space. I put it in perspective when it comes to our Microsoft partnership. We're happy to announce that as part of this major security incident management moves, we've evolved how we handle major security incident mediations. And now we have deep integrations within Microsoft Teams, as well as the SharePoint Online File Explorer. Now, through automation, we can also add those particular SharePoint Online folders to the specified collaboration and collaborators that are involved in this major security incident record. This to me is actually game changing because now we don't have to move this information manually or put all this information into different Teams chats. We can simply collaborate in one space and all of this information will now be captured programmatically within the major security incident ticket. So within our record, we can see these folders have been pre-populated. And now we can go ahead and move in any eventual information that pertains to this major security incident record. On the right-hand side, we can see the activity. We can see that our unpatched vulnerability for this particular incident has involved our mitigations folder, and there's going to be some relevant data that goes into here, which might be coming from our SIM, from a vulnerability scanners, or from an exported log source. Notice now we also have Microsoft Teams automation. This is an activity that's captured in real time from those respective team members and those assignment groups. So these assigned members can now chat in real time, and all of this relevant information is captured. We can see that down here in our chat channel manager, which also gives us the ability to create new channels and also add the respective members for those channels. We can also see the name of the channel, the type, and of course, add a description. So we have a little bit more context on which channels we should be chatting in terms of this major security incident. Moving right along into our tasks, this is where we can see additional flexibility as well as reporting. When it comes to understanding how we roll up these affected assets, users, and locations, as well as the progress metrics for tasks and that collaboration activity we just went through. On the bottom here, we see our draft. We have a couple of different security incident tasks, our SIT tickets that have been open. We also have a major security incident task that has been open to search for vulnerable code. Over in the middle, we have our assigned task. Now, this is a specific major security incident task to apply this network mitigation. We've assigned this to Adam. We can see this is prioritized as a level one. And we can see the parent incident here, which is what we're in right now. We also have some relevant information on when it was last updated. And of course, we can create tags to further investigate this particular major security incident task. In addition, we now see the additional card here around in progress. And you'll notice as that refreshes, it is refreshing in real time to make sure that we have the most up-to-date information within the tasks of our major security incident. On the far right-hand side, we have our closed tasks. So we can see this one is currently in review and in the contained state but we are looking to close these out for these assigned end users or assets uh, based on those observables. We have a quick sorting options. Let's move over to the incident impact. Over the incident impact, this is where the vulnerability response side comes into the equation. As I mentioned before, while major security incident management works in conjunction with security incident response as well as vulnerability response. So now I can see all of my configuration items. Here are all my assets. These are the vulnerability numbers that are tied to them. The assignment groups who is working on the actual patching. And then the last time this was updated. Notice I have the affected assets listed. I can also look at my affected locations. Here we are in San Diego. We have two affected locations that need to be prioritized. And of course, our affected users. So now we have evidential information on who we need to follow up with. Of course, we can automate those follow-ups through some of the automated notifications in our workflows. Now, as I mentioned before, we're able to link this information to that security incident response. So the initial security incident record that started this entire order of operations 
and the overall promotion of the major security incident into our war room started here. So we can actually see and drill into this specific record. Last but certainly not least, our threat intelligence. So if you're leveraging threat intelligence third party providers and you're starting to feed in some of this additional information, we can also apply that in the major security incident management offering through indicators, as well as the observables. Again, one stop shop for everything. Think of major security incident management as your Swiss Army knife for security. This is going to give you everything you need in one collaborative and cohesive space to avoid the chaotic conversations and really start driving those data driven decisions around security operational efficiency and effectiveness. And finally, for our timeline, this is actually a really nice additive feature. I really enjoy this because it gives you a couple of different areas that understands the projected timeline of events and snapshots when actions actually took place. So as you can see here, I went ahead and opened up their timeline. In the legend, of course, we have our ranges and our different events. And what's nice about this is we can toggle these on or off to indicate those specific filters in our timeline here. But what I really love about this is the ability to click in that point in time and surface the exact event and the relevant information that happened and who the event was created by. We can see here that there is web servers that have been patched. That is the comment that was created for this particular event. We move over to the right. We can see here that we have some traffic monitoring enabled by the system administrator. And we see the timestamp. So initially I have time stamps, point in time solutions through this projected timeline, all the way up until we have finally resolved this based on the resolution date. Now, if you'd like to find out additional information, feel free to visit us at www.servicenow.com. And of course, as always, we can certainly provide a demonstration and a deep dive with our security operations team. Thank you.